Hi, welcome to Tarcher. I'm Joe Flotinos, and today we are speaking with Dr. Marty Horowitz, who has written a book called A Course in Happiness, Mastering the Three Levels of Self-Understanding That Lead to True and Lasting Contentment. And before we begin talking to Dr. Horowitz, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about Dr. Horowitz. He is the professor of psychiatry at the University of California in San Francisco, where he directs the Center on Stress and Personality, and he is also the recipient of the Lifetime Achievement Award from the International Society for Traumatic Stress Studies. So the obvious question for somebody who has written a book on happiness is, are you happy and how did you discover your path to happiness? Well, I am happy and I've been uh, happy in the midst of times when I was unhappy. That is, I see happiness as a kind of continuity, a constancy, a platform, and even in the midst of uh, a very serious life situations, and I've been through them, um, there's a grasping forward, kind of throwing an anchor forward and pulling yourself out of the mud and back into uh, the light and uh, the solid ground where you, you feel centered and authentic and, and capable of coping even with uh, the uh, human predicament. Mm. So what, what are the tangible benefits of being happy? Well, the tangible benefits are really in the pursuit of happiness. It's the journey. Um, and of course, the pleasures and joys are in states when you are happy, but that's not our lot to be in those all the time. So I take a very long range view on happiness, which is why in A Course in Happiness, I emphasize the steps to stress mastery. Unlike some other books, which deal with uh, focusing on the present moment mm -hmm. and trying to make it as pleasant as possible and as stress managed as possible, while those are all good techniques to know and to learn and practice, it's also, I think, very important to learn and practice the techniques of looking with a clear lens at the threats in the future and knowing that you have courage and stamina and also a plan. As, a, as an old uh, Boy Scout, I think be prepared. Is be really prepared, exactly. Motto. You talk about the three levels of self-understanding, the three eyes. Can you go through those very briefly and, and give us an yes. example of them? In A Course in Happiness, there's a chapter kind of in the beginning on each of the three eyes, which are uh, integration, which is the somewhat difficult and patient-requiring task of putting the parts of yourself together. Because we all have antithetical values. We not only know the difference between good and bad, but we also have competing ideas of what's good. And we have to kind of resort those out. And we have to balance our motives in relation to our skills and what life's dealing us as cards. So that's uh, the task of uh, integration. And then there's the task of intimacy. And those things go hand in glove. You can't separate them. We, we, we cannot live alone, I don't think. We can be alone and peaceful at times, but sometime in life you're connected, whether it's spiritually, with other people, with institutions, with values. And, and you need that. So the obstacles to intimacy, however, are formidable. They include various irritations and envy, jealousy, comparisons, competitions, even I'm sure at this workplace there's uh, what I call a co-optition. You're cooperating, but you're also competing for who's going to get the... No, not here. Not here, no, that's don't great. Don't believe it. Right, well that <laughs> happens in universities, <laughs> where I've lived my life. And then the third is integrity, so that the balance between the self as integrated as possible and intimacy as caretaking and responsible and compassionate as possible. That balance is essential, I think, to happiness, and it means having integrity. Now, you write in here at the, at the beginning of the book, um, and actually throughout the book, about your own very personal story about finding happiness even in the midst of, of uh, some of life's most difficult situations. Can you find happiness even in the midst of, of the most extreme situations, death of a loved one, uh, illness? Well, I, I 
the seeds of the book uh, was in a wonderful relationship I had with my wife, Carol Horowitz, who died of cancer several years ago. I'm now remarried and uh, have love in my life and am happy. But even in the midst of uh, Carol and I dealing with a, um, a struggle against what we knew for two years was going to be a terminal cancer, we had plenty of times of fear and depression and sorrow, but we worked together throughout it and we thought it through and we talked a lot about it and we made sure we did things that uh, provided us with a sense of meaning. So even a few days before her death, which we sort of knew when that was coming, um, we went out and shopped for the grandkids, which gave her pleasure. And uh, we were very contented that we had had a very intimate relationship and we didn't lose it when we were facing up to a really tragic experience. And uh, so she uh, basically, uh, in a way, told me, write this book, remodel the kitchen, and get remarried. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I remember her with with great happiness and contentment that we had a great relationship. It shows that you're not talking about a superficial level of happiness where we just feel, we try to find ways to stay happy in the moment, like a, a, I'll buy a new coat, that will make me happy. You're talking, you use the word meaning, about a deeper level of happiness. Yes, yes. The, uh, that's what I mean by um, integration, that is you're resorting those meanings. And when you've done that enough times and feel solidly realistic and authentic about it, when you've prioritized your values so you feel, well, these are, these are mine, I've, I have these values, I am going to continue them with courage and, uh, through obstacles, then you have this long range feeling like I've been, I've done things of value, I'm leaving some legacy, this book is in a way my legacy to my children. I mean, they're grown up now, they can read it. Right. Is happiness our ultimate goal? Um, the problem with answering that yes or no is that no one really has a good definition of happiness after 3,000 years of writing about it. And so uh, I think our goal is balance and harmony. How do we balance, how do we protect ourselves? How do we avoid our own displeasure and pain? How do we protect and care for other people so that they don't feel unnecessary displeasure and pain? That's why I've enjoyed being a physician. I mean, before I was a psychiatrist, I was you know, a real medical doctor. And I always felt just, uh, even though I was up too long and felt I wish I could get some sleep, I felt I was taking care of people and, and I was taking I still do, take great pride in them. And so that gives a center of meaningfulness. And the, the, the obstacle that people have is they think, well, I ought to be, I ought to find the cure for cancer. Well, that would be great, but I wish I had, actually. <laughs> but uh, that's what I mean by the discrepancy between excessive goals yes. and how you're evaluating yourself. And then the, beneath that, there's the things that people told you that were bad about you and that you then repeat in kind of loops like I'm so stupid or right. I procrastinate too much or right. I'm not creative enough. And in the book I'm saying really how do you get those statements in self-talk out so you could kind of take a little distance from them. Don't just disagree with them, don't just say stop it. Don't just switch to thinking about being on a beach and looking at the blue water. Well, that's nice to do with the restoration. But how do you actually think that through? 